So this is part three. Part one was the center, part two was the white, part three is going to be a couple of rounds of color. Even though I was working with a different color, uh, I think it was this one here, but well, it would look like that. Um, because I'm using a blue, because it just is better on the video, some colors are not video friendly, um, I decided to just use a pink center. And as you can see, here are a pile of them that will need the threads worked away. So we'll just take one as an example of what we are trying to achieve. This is what the square will look like before the yarns are worked away. I have videos on how to make just the plain, what is called the compact stitch, the plain granny square, starting with a plain center and working along. So you can go and find one of those videos. But the principle is the same, except it has a daisy center. Okay, my yarn. This one has been <clears throat> worked on the uh, on the machine. Let me see. I want to come from the center. Oh, the center's still in there, so let me just pack this away then. There we go. There's my center. It's a thinnish yarn. You can really feel that. So what I will need is my four millimeter hook and I'm going to start off with a slip knot. So on the finger I'm winding to the back, the short tail is at the back, but not too short. If you want something to work with later on, rather have a tail that's too long than too short when it comes to sewing in your ends. Slip your hook underneath both loops on the finger, then go See, I've clipped them there with my fingers. Go and fetch that tail and bring them back. This is what it's going to look like. Taking your finger out and closing. That's your slip knot. Now what I do is, oh, I see I haven't actually worked this one away, so let me do that quickly. Doesn't really matter. This is a bigger one, but doesn't matter. Going through, catching the yarn with the sharp pointed needle, coming back down, catching the yarn with the sharp pointed needle, it really anchors it in. And tucking him away, and later on I will come back and work him. Okay, there we go. What I like to do is I like to find where that part was. You can either look to give you a guidance or just start fiddling on that side. But with the tails you put in, actually no, it's here somewhere. And where that ending is, I want to turn that into a corner. See here? There are going to be six double crochets coming into that gap. So it really hides that in not and because I like to start with corners, but I don't want to start with that one because that's where all the yarns are. <laughs> I'm going to go to another corner. So corner, corner, middle section. Corner, corner, middle section. I mean, I could make this video much faster just to show you the basics, but I like to explain why I do what I do. So we're going to go, that's what's going to be a corner, middle section, corner. So let's go to that corner stick into it. Remember it's chain two from the previous row. Go and fetch the yarn. Go and fetch the yarn again, pull through the both loops. Tighten up the tail, giving it a tug. Tightening up this one, nice, nicely anchored. You're going to want to have it a little bit to the side because you're going to have to come back and fit in some more there. 
chain up one, that will now count as one double crochet, US terms. I'm going to put in another double crochet. Why? Because later on, the third double crochet of this cluster will be here, and so that chain up will be between the two, and it becomes virtually invisible. Let's see where it is. There it is. You literally can't see it, but he's in there. I just love, I try and always do my work in the way that things become as invisible as possible. So it's actually quite exciting for me, so I will tweak a pattern until until I achieve that. Now this is a compact granny square pattern. There are no chains on the sides. There's only one chain in each corner. And each cluster has three double crochet US terms. Wrap the yarn. Go into the next chain space of the white, pull the yarn through, pull through two loops, pull through two loops. That is your first double crochet. Wrap the yarn, go through the same space, fetch the yarn, good now three on the hook, pull through two, pull through two. Wrap the yarn, go and fetch the yarn, now you've got three on the hook, pull through two, pull through two. That is one cluster of three double cro of double crochets comprising of three double crochets. Now we come into the corner. This is the corner where the white yarn ended. I'm going to be making two clusters. Each cluster is going to have three double crochet and there's going to be one chain in the middle. One, two, three, chain one. One, two, three. Coming into the next white chain space, it's going to be a cluster of three double crochets. Note I did not chain between these clusters because this is a side. Coming into the next corner, I did not chain, I went straight into that cluster. third double crochet of the cluster. Now I chain one because it is a corner. And as you can see the daisy is facing what I call right way, the facing up. And the first row is also facing up. Simply because I want these daisies, when they are finished after three rows, that will be the size of my granny square, I want these daisies to be facing up. And in the previous video, I did actually, to the second, well, the beginning, I actually did explain that some of my daisies were facing a different way. Look at that, this one, this one that, that's my, what I call my mess square. So this one here, you can see the daisies actually so-called upside down, but it comes out as a relief, which is actually really pretty. But these, will, these are part of a group, so they will be a part of a group. To finish at the corner, going into the next white chain two space and making three double crochets, going straight into the next white chain space, compact granny square, so there are no chains on the side, but it's a corner here, so I've chained one. Some people like to chain two. For their compact runny squares once again do what you feel is comfortable for you tweak the pattern the way that you want coming onto the home run now this is the this is the last cluster on the side and i'm coming back to my square i'm coming back to my corner so what do i need here i need to make cluster and
and I need to chain one. And I see that here missing is one double crochet. Now I'll show you how to do it. I want the double crochet to slip into that space there. So I wrap the yarn and I go and fetch the yarn. But what I do is I give it a little tug just so that I know it's literally slipped into that crack. If you don't, unfortunately sometimes you can actually end up with quite a large loop because the yarn has been caught onto the other double crochets and it hasn't actually found its own little space. Give it a little tug so you make it sure it's fitted in there. It's fitting nicely in there. Come in and finish that double crochet. If you are going to be ending your color here, then you will cut it, make what I call an invisible V, same way that I did for the previous row. And in my other videos, you will see you will see there are ways on how to change color for each row. But I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is go into that V, fetch the yarn, and slip it all the way through. Then you'll see that between the two clusters there is a little V there. I'm going to go back in that V, but not into the space. I'm going into that V and I'm slipping into there. This has now brought my yarn right above the space. And it has created an invisible step. So now I am above that space, that hole. I'm going to go in. I'm going to fetch the yarn. Put two on the hook now. I'm going to pull the yarn through. But I'm not going to make it tight because that is now a step up. Give it a little tug, it's not a big one. And chain one. That is a step up. It creates a double crochet stitch but it is actually chaining up. I make another double crochet. You can if you want to go on to the next group and you can slip in the double crochet there in the back. That's what I'm going to do. Or you can complete your cluster and you can make three. It's really up to you. I'm going to do it this way. Sometimes I change. I don't actually have any rhyme or reason for this row. <clears throat> Sometimes it depends on the yarn as well. If it's very thin, then I'll definitely only make two and I'll come and push one in there just to keep that one in place. But it's up to you. I'm going to... Oh, that's what I did wrong. I knew there was something I was doing wrong. Well, well, well. So let's just go back to the chain because I don't want him to be tight. That's what I was doing. Chain up. Okay. Now you turn your work. I kept thinking there was something I wasn't doing right. If you're going to go straight, you would have done it that way. Then all your work would be facing upwards. But I am going to. That's how he lies. Look, the V's are there. I am going to be turning my work. So I made the first stitch. Now I turn the work and I make a double crochet. You can see it's, it's a little bit thick there because those are the slip knots. You've been slipping along. Slip stitches, not slip knots, slip stitches. That first stitch, I'm going to make over that, give it a little tug. First double crochet. If you want to, you can make a third one to really hide it. Or you can come with the third one in the back there. For now, I'll put the third one like that. Once again, it's your own personal preference. So now we're actually on the back of the work. There's your gap. I'm going to put three double crochets. So you see how easily actually one can uh, go in the wrong direction. It's a corner, three double crochets, chain one, and three double crochets. It's also why I really like to make my things in groups to make a couple of dozen of uh, the, the little worms as I call them, the first part, and then make 
then sew them closed and then make the daisies. Because if you look at this, this pattern, the first one is half double crochet. Then we have the double crochets, but they are in clusters, so they're not completed the double crochet until the last step. And now we have double crochets, and each one is completed until you make them, and, and you go on to the next double crochet. So by making a whole lot um, of the same section, your mind will then be locked into that pattern. You don't have to think. So that's why I said it's really wonderful for mantras, or if you're watching something on TV that's quite... Uh, gripping, you don't want to follow a pattern. There we go. Coming to the corner, so it's a group of three. chain one and another group of three pull some of the yarn out going into the next space so I'm just going to pick up speed here distance from my eyes to my hands is not quite right so I'm slightly out of focus be holding my work a little bit closer I do that I hope the lamps haven't put too much shade on it And turn the corner. Now what I will do here is I will come to the end of this row. I will step up again and then this part will end, this video part, and then I will go on to the next video on how to sew up the square. So, okay, so we've come to the end now. As you can see, there are three double crochets in that group. Remember, the first part was a step up, and there's two double crochets. I'm not going to be changing color, so I'm keeping the same color. I slip in to the first one, slip in to the next V, as you can see, slip in to the third V. Now I've come back to that space there. Let me show you. There's two different ways of doing it. We'll should do one way and then we'll do another. Okay, so I've come to the last double crochet, slip into the top there, that's a top V, slip in, go to the next V, you slip in, Trying to make them too try make them too tight, just keep them at normal normal size. Slip in, now you've got your third one. And then you will go underneath, fetch the yarn, bring it over. First, second. That's your step up. Turn your work and work back. But as you can see, look how the little ridge it's created. So I prefer not to do that, but it's an option, you can do it. Especially if you're, if you're only working from the one side, then it doesn't really matter what the back looks like. But I like my squares to actually be reversible. So I'm trying to make things as invisible as possible. So I'll come like that. One, two. Third double crochet. 
go in the top that first double crochet which was actually the step up but it's counted as a double crochet and I'll slip stitch now here I just turn the work okay chain one that's optional you can chain one you can chain another but I don't like to do that it's all different ways you'll see every time every YouTube video is a different way turn the work so you come back to that slip knot you turn the work and I go back into that space pull the yarn through pull the yarn through again single crochet chain one up and that is now my first double crochet make two one and two makes a cluster of three so there's many many different ways of turning your work of ending it just see what really suits you as I said everybody has a different preference everyone likes a different effect and sometimes I do change as I said sometimes the yarn because it's very thick or it's very thin I will modify what I do simply because one technique might work for one type of yarn and it really doesn't work for the next type of yarn so there's no rhyme and reason it's your own, it's your own creative uh, endeavor and um, you've got to find what suits you so this will just continue until I get to the end and then when I get to the end, I'll cut the yarn and pull it through. And it will look like that. Okay, on to the next video. Part 4, I believe it is.